Three different espresso machines at three vastly different price points. What features make one a lot more valuable than another? And are those features worth spending 100 times more on an espresso machine for your house? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Stephen Holm and I'm with Home Grounds. And I am just finding out that the AC doesn't really work in this room of my house. So I am very warm. Now to start off, I need to share some sad news. You might notice that uh, this video is about three espresso machines and I only have two here. Well, what happened was I borrowed a La Marzocco Linea Mini from a good friend of mine. And he said, yes, you can definitely borrow it, uh, but I use it every day. And so I wanted to make sure I didn't hold on to it for too long. So I borrowed it for a day, got all the footage I needed, and then I went to edit this video, and I didn't record any audio. Nothing. Just me going. So I had two options. I could either use that video, uh, try to guess what I was saying, and record a voiceover, kind of like this. Hello, my name is Stephen Holm, and I'm with Home Grounds. Or just reshoot it and not have the Linea Mini to show you. But luckily, I do have a lot of the footage that I took of using the espresso machine, so I hope that that is helpful enough. So anyways, let's hop right into the video. We are talking about three different espresso machines, three very different price points. Let's just start by going over what each machine is. Let's start with our cheapest machine. This one in particular has the brand name Bruisley, but it's one of those where if you look up the machine, there's a bunch of different manufacturers with the exact same thing, just with different names thrown on it. So this one in particular I saw being sold at Walmart, there was a completely different brand selling out on Amazon, but they can be had new for between $100 and $150. I bought this one used for $60, so I'm using the $60 number because it looks nicer in the title. Our mid-tier for pricing is the Breville Brisa Express. This is my personal machine. I've had it for a couple years. It is worth $600 if you buy one brand new right now. It's a great option, we'll talk more about it later. And then the most expensive option is the La Marzocco Linea Mini. It retails for $5,900 if you were to buy one brand new right now. And that is just for the base model, you can get a bunch of upgrades and whatnot, but right around $6,000. So those are our three machines. Let's hop right into brewing coffee with each one, talking about it, what features they each have, and what makes them unique. Starting with the Bruiser. Like I said, you can find this brand new for $100, $150. I bought this one used for $60. And it does make espresso. Now there's a lot of things that cheaper espresso machines do to kind of help you out. These machines are not designed for the serious home barista who has this crazy expensive grinder and is weighing everything. No, these machines are for someone who wants to make espresso at home. They don't want to worry about everything that goes into it, but they still want espresso. So what these machines do is they use what's called pressurized baskets. Oh, pressurized baskets. And what that means is the basket here that holds coffee has a bunch of holes on the bottom like you would see in a normal espresso basket, but only one hole out of the bottom. And what that's going to do is it's going to take all that coffee and sort of put pressure on all of it. And then when it all comes out of the single hole at the bottom here, it looks like real espresso. It has crema, it looks beautiful. And it does that pretty much no matter how much coffee you use, what your grind size is, anything. You're going to get espresso out of this. And that's great if that's what you're looking for. You don't want to put in a lot of effort. You just want to brew coffee and you want it to look good and maybe taste good. Now this machine is obviously made pretty cheaply. This portafilter is very light and I feel like I could bend it maybe. Uh, the basket just falls out. It's not being held in there by retaining springs. It does have a decent sized water reservoir in the back here. The drip tray is fairly small. Nothing much to say about it. And then the machine works by Obviously you turn it on using the power button and then the buttons on the top of the machine will flash until they are ready to brew Now that happens pretty quickly 
Uh, I'm sure the boiler for water in here is very small. This isn't a machine that you're gonna be able to make a lot of drinks consecutively. So once that's heated up, you press either the double or single espresso button and it goes. It actually has pre-infusion in it, which uh, surprised me, but you can't program anything on this machine. You just hit a button, it does everything for you, it eventually stops for you, but that goes way too long. I had to stop it about halfway through every time, and that's it for brewing espresso. You can also flip this switch over here when you're in espresso mode, and it will dispense hot water out of the steam wand. And now if you want to steam milk, then you press the steam button here, and the machine is going to have to heat up. Because in these cheaper machines, you only have one boiler, and that boiler has to do both the espresso brewing and the milk steaming, but steaming has to be at a much higher temperature. So in order to get up there, the machine has to heat everything up and it takes a little bit, but then you finally get steam and you can steam milk. Steaming milk on this machine was a nightmare. I'm sure there's a technique to it that I just didn't want to put in the effort to learn because I'm lazy and I didn't like the machine anyways. But yeah, it was very difficult. It took a very long time. I did not like it. And after you steam, you would switch it back into espresso mode and that boiler would have to dispense some steam or give off heat in order to bring it back down to the right temperature to brew espresso. But the problem with machines like this is there is not really anything regulating or keeping that temperature stable. Same goes with the pressure. You don't know what pressure you're getting out of this machine. Even though it has a pressure gauge, you don't know what that's displaying. It's not labeled and it's sort of all over the place. It just wavers throughout the entire shot. So it's pretty much useless. So that's the Bruzley. It's not the worst espresso machine I've ever used. It made espresso. It cheats a little bit with the pressurized porter filter system, but that's very common in these types of machines. But it just doesn't really have any further features besides brewing espresso, steaming milk, and having hot water. You can't dial anything in, you can't adjust anything. Not really big components at all. It's fairly cheaply made. So that's what you're getting for $60 or 100, 150 brand new. So let's move up a level to the Breville Barista Express. Okay, so the Breville Barista Express. Like I said earlier, this is my personal machine. I've owned it for a couple of years now and I use it all the time. It makes pretty decent espresso. It steams milk well. It has this built-in grinder. Now I should have mentioned this earlier, but the grinder on this machine, it's a great feature. It is something to consider. I did not use it in this video because I wanted to stay consistent with a grinder through all machines and I wanted something a lot nicer because this grinder is not super nice. We'll talk about that in a bit. But I wanted something a lot nicer that wouldn't be preventing me from getting the most out of each machine. So anyways, back to the Brisa Express. I'll just kind of go over everything. Like I said, it has a grinder. Grinder is nothing super great. Um, it has a tamper on here, which is nice. You have a porta filter, which I will say this is an aftermarket porta filter. The one that it comes with it has spouts, uh, but you can buy this bottomless one here so you can actually see the espresso flowing out the bottom. Breville does include a few different baskets for the machine. So they have a double and a single, but then they also include pressurized baskets like we saw in the Bruzley. And that's where this machine is kind of interesting because Breville has a lot of really cool features in this machine and they give you some adjustability, but they're also targeting it toward an audience that maybe doesn't want to worry about all that stuff. You have the grinder all in here. You can have pressurized baskets so you don't have to worry about your grind size or your dose or your yield necessarily. So this machine can kind of work for both people that don't care about espresso as much and those that maybe do a little bit more. But anyways, back to the machine. We have a nice articulating steam wand here. On the side, we have a dial for initiating steam or hot water. A very nicely sized drip tray here that I probably should have cleaned out. And then it also pulls up this little tray back here which you can have your tools, your back flushing disc, all of that good stuff. 
Oh, and then lastly, a nice big water reservoir here with a spot to put a water filter. So brewing espresso on this machine. You have buttons for a double and a single, and you can program each of those by pressing this program button, hitting double, it'll start your extraction, and this machine does a automatic 10 second pre-infusion unless you're using it manually. And then it'll stop the espresso once you hit this again, and that is now your double espresso recipe. So it's kind of this weird, you can program stuff, but you can't program it completely, meh. And then same thing with things like water temperature and pressure, you can't adjust any of those in this machine, at least without opening it up and doing some modifications, which those are options. I've never gone into any of them with this machine, but they are available. Proceed at your own risk with those. But with all of that, you can get pretty good espresso out of this. It is much better than anything you can get out of the Bruisley, out of cheaper machines. Now, as far as steaming goes, once again, like the Bruisley, this is a single boiler. So Breville makes a few different machines. They do have the dual boiler, which has separate boilers for milk steaming and the espresso, so you can do both at the same time. But this model only has one. So that means that when you want to steam milk, you have to flip the switch into steam mode. You will hear the machine going through this process of building up the temperature and kind of spitting out water and steam out of the steam one as it gets ready. And then it makes this really fun as you're steaming milk, it's kind of fun to dance to. But the steaming power is much better on this machine. You can get great quality milk out of it. I have no complaints there. So what makes the Barista Express worth 10 times more than the Bruisley? Well, you are getting better espresso out of it because it has some temperature and pressure regulation in there, which I forgot to mention, we do have another pressure gauge on the front here that you can see your pressure. Uh, you don't know what the labels are. There is a zone that it shows if it's good or not, but you can't dial that in at all. But the espresso you can get out of this machine is much better. You get better milk steaming. It's a better build quality. So even though it's kind of all plastic, but it feels like good plastic, if that makes sense. Like I could punch this machine a bunch and feel fine about it, but I wouldn't drop it from a balcony. Hopefully you understand exactly what I'm saying. But it's served me well. I've had friends that have had these machines for like 10 years, pulled so many espressos on them, and eventually they give out, maybe the grinder breaks, maybe something inside breaks that's kind of an expensive repair and maybe time to upgrade, but it's a decent machine. For $600, if you are just getting into espresso, I do always recommend this machine to people. But where does it fall short of something like the Linea Mini? Let's find out. So the La Marzocco Linea Mini. Let's pretend that it's right here. This is a beautiful espresso machine made by La Marzocco, who is probably the most reputable espresso machine company in the world. If you go to pretty much any cafe, there is a decent chance that they are using a La Marzocco espresso machine. They are everywhere. And they modeled the Linea Mini after their most popular commercial model, the Linea. Now this machine is a beast. It is huge and weighs so much, which is one of the reasons I kind of didn't want to get it back for this video. It was so heavy to have to carry into my kitchen, load it back into my car, all this stuff. It is heavy but that means that it's built really well. It is all stainless steel, all commercial grade parts in this machine that you can have in your kitchen. Brewing espresso with it is a dream. It has all these features in it that mean you are going to get good, consistent, reliable espresso. One of those things is a PID, which means that it is keeping the temperature consistent throughout the machine and you can adjust that temperature using a knob on the outside so it has adjustable brew temperature. Another thing it has is dual boilers. So that means you can brew espresso and steam milk at the same time. And those boilers, mainly the steam boiler, is huge. You're gonna be able to steam so much milk out of that thing and make drinks 
one after another. You can adjust the pressure, so you can have it at nine bars, you can move it down to six if you would like, and you can experiment with that. And all of these things I've been talking about are just built extremely well and look really great. And that's something that's sort of overlooked when buying an espresso machine. It's this weird thing where you don't wanna spend twice as much money with something that just looks better, but I felt great making espresso on the Linea Mini. It just felt really nice and it made me excited to make espresso with it. Not only because that espresso was instantly way more delicious than I've ever gotten out of my Breville, but just the whole experience of everything, it felt incredible. So whether or not that is something that's important to you is the feel and the excitement of everything, well, that's up to you. So those were the three espresso machines, $60, $600, $6, $6,000. When spending a lot more money, you are getting things like stability, ease of use, reliability over time, plenty of features, and build quality. Whether or not all of those things are worth spending $5,940 more on an espresso machine, well, that's gonna be up to you. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, if I got anything wrong, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. It really helps us make more videos like this. And until next time, happy brewing.